So it's separated, and you're going to gently pour it into this other empty shell. To try to pull it back and stuff. But you don't want to rupture the yolk because it defeats the purpose.
we have your six egg yolks together. And the next thing in the recipe, you're going to need half a cup of white sugar. case, um, God forbid, you end up um, one and eggnog and you lose electric. Um, so it's good to know how to do things just in case you don't have the ideal conditions. So, um, and also, the other thing too is that if you make it by hand, it's going to be roughly about Probably around 10 minutes or so. Just kind of like it reminds me of like the texture when you make um, Delgado coffee. But I'll show you guys hopefully um, how it looks. So you're just going to um, grab yourself a whisk because um, you want air to get in it. So basically. Just go like this for about 10 minutes or so. So the next thing that you're going to do while you're mixing, you see how you're going to see also um, the color change slightly. It's going to look like a fluffy, light look, like, how else do I describe it? Kind of almost like a mustard-ish color. Um, the egg yolks at first was yellow, but you'll see it's a little bit different. But you're going to go like this for about like 10 minutes or so. Um, so while I mix that, I'll tell you the next set of ingredients that you're going to need. So you're done with your egg yolks and sugar. So I'm getting that out of my way. Next things that you're going to need is you're going to need milk and heavy cream. my secret tip. I use um, creamer. So this time I'm using French vanilla because I really like a vanilla-ish taste with my um, eggnogs. But it's not going to be overwhelming, which is surprising. And then you're also going to use imitation vanilla. Some people like um, pure vanilla, but it's just a preference. And then for spice, I'm only using nutmeg this time. But Again, like I said, if you like spicier, you can always add um, cadamon. You can also use allspice and um, cinnamon. So this bit, um, today, when I make this with you guys, I'm gonna be actually using nutmeg and cinnamon. So I'll get that all mixed up in a second. Okay, I'm gonna be over there. Anyway, we're gonna mix this, and that's gonna be about 10 minutes from now. So what I'm gonna do, actually, um, to save you guys some time, I'm gonna get this while I'm mixing it, and then when I finish mixing, I'll be right back. Hi everyone, so I'm back. So I realized something that I forgot to mention before. So I was going on the um, tangent about how it's good um, to 
can know exactly how to use my things by hand without using equipment that requires electric. Um, so when you're doing this procedure, um, not procedure, but when you're do making an egg knob on this, according to this batch, you're still going to need for clarification electric, but for this portion, you're not going to need electric. So it's good that you know how to do this because say you don't have an electric stove, um, You're going to um, you can also use um, some people have stove tops and it's different um, that it's going to be um, according to different areas you're at. You can also have the option of using gas. So if you have that and then you say you need your power or um, something happens to you in the fall and winter the flames. Pennsylvania, the um, weather is unpredictable at times, and it can be all different seasons that you can think of within a day. So, um, it's good to know um, different hedging skills and things because of fall storm or winter storm. That's where I was basically going with. So, anyway, um, I'm still um, missing. But actually, it seems like it's not a full 10 minutes, like, it's already has more of like a color change and it's kind of like that light, uh, light and kind of like airy type of texture. It's hard to like, really describe, but you also see it's like, like going down to the foot. Um, if you obviously um, decided to use a mixer, it shouldn't take that long at all. So, meanwhile, you have your eggs separate with the sugar. We're going to stick together with the other one. We're going to stick together with the other one. We're going to stick together with the other one. We're going to stick together with the other one. We're going to stick together with the other one. We're going to stick together with the other one. We're going to stick together with the other one. What kind of makes it a bit different? So, we're going to use two cups of um, bowl milk, but um, some people are wearing a can of like whole milk. So, there's alternatives to that. You can have almond milk, there's even um, other types. Um, what else? I don't know how it would taste, but there's cashew. And there's several other types of, like, there's so many different um, options other than whole milk. Um, there's skim milk, there's also 1%, 2%. So that should be good. 
cup of milk and one cup of heavy cream. Like, 
now. I'll show you what I was trying to say. So you can put the spoon in the um, hole for your can, and voila, it holds it so you don't have to put it on the side or put it somewhere else. So, that's a, a neat little trick, um, kitchen trick. So I'll try to keep in mind different things that I remember um, reading up before about or just figuring out on my own. So hopefully you like these little tidbits. But anyway, it's going to take a while, like I said. Um, it's been about, about five minutes or so. So check in about maybe ten minutes or so, but you're still going to stir it every so often because you don't want the milk to end up sticking to the bottom of the pan. Or the saucepan. And you also have to watch it. You can't just do other things and come back because if not, um, the milk could possibly, if it gets too hot, boil over. And that can happen um, sometimes so fast. Then you have a big mess to clean up. So. Anyway, I want to hit pause, and when that's done, or at that point, I'll let you, I'll come back and show you guys. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, hi everyone, so I'm back. So I'm going to show you They like to add um, alcohol to it because of the concern of eating um, like raw eggs. So basically, by you adding the hot milk to the eggs, it tempers the eggs, so the eggs are in a way basically cooked. So that's how um, I make um, eggnog. But there's so many different ways you can. Um, I don't know. Um, I tried so many different ways, but this way, um, when you let it um, cool off, it actually comes out being actually like the perfect mix. It's not too strong, not too weak, um, but it does have to cool for a while. And when it cools, it's going to actually thicken. So um, if you end up later on wanting to um, thin it down, you can add this mix to a blender and you can um, add about one to two tablespoons of milk. So Hopefully, um, but usually when I make it, I like it on the thicker side, so it should be fine um, if you don't want to um, make the thinner version. So anyway, getting back to making eggnog. So when you, in case you don't know when is the time to take your milk off, you're going to want to... Um, Continue to be mixing your milk. Um, it doesn't have to be consistently, but off and on so it doesn't stick to the bottom of your pan. But when you have your spoon and say it sits for a while without stirring it, you're going to notice that it's going to be a skim on top of it um, because of the nutmeg that you added and just the heat. Um, it's going to cause the milk to boil. So, I don't know if it shows because the lighting, but see how the steam's coming off of it? So, when you notice it's like that, it's like right before it's going to come to a boil. And that's actually, should be the right temperature. Now, if you want to, you can always um, use the actual temperature gauge or uh, thermometer. But just for like eyeballing purposes, it should be, should be fine. So I'm just stirring my um, egg and sugar mix a little bit because it sat while I was waiting with the milk, milk to come to um, the right time. So this is what I was trying to say about the color change. It looks almost like a light lighter color version of mustard, so 
like almost like a Dijon or a honey Dijon, or it's like if you're making cakes or making icing, it's kind of like that's kind of color. It also looks like pancake mix. But anyway, um, the things you think about family. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna add one spoonful, and then you're going to whisk it while it's basically gonna just keep repeating that until the um, mixture is all transferred from the saucepan to your stainless steel pan. And you're gonna whisk it vigorously so it's not going to Yeah, I'm 
college version, which I'm not telling you how. But if we were, um, the options you could use, um, if you wanted to have like a spice, um, spicier taste, you can use like a spice rum, or you can use a spice or spice. You can also use, if you want like a more tropical taste, you can use like a coconut rum. Um, I use But at the same time, um, you have to also keep in mind that you might have to add more sugar to your mix because the higher the alcohol content, the more of like a bitterness is going to end up having. So, unless you don't like um, like a moderate sweet and want more bitter eggnog. And then you also can use it if you're, um, depending on the type that you want, but if you want a stronger one, you can only use the type of alcohol with it. But again, that's just so you can do for thought for those who are old enough. <laughs> See how the color is changing more to look like a frothy eggnog? And that's pretty much what you're going to end up being left with. Okay.
but I end up getting both of it out. So that's going to be good enough. So I'll turn it back to medium, and what you're going to do is just basically let it again come back to almost a boil. You don't want it out of oil. And then when it's at that same temperature basically that was like before, that you start to see the um, steam coming off, then what you're going to do is you're going to get yourself a container that is going to be heat safe. So I have one that is basically it's like a heavy plastic that's BPA free. So um, you don't want to put it in red, like plastic that's not BPA free because it's technically not as safe. That's why they say how to use products that are more than free for There's so, so much discussion about like everything out there, so I won't go into that. But basically what you're going to do is get into a container that it can be airtight um, and it could be glass, such as like these cars, it could be plastic and that's heavy plastic that's being there. Or Um, you can even have it in a container like what I showed you and have um, plastic wrap over it to make sure that it keeps the air out and seal. But for storing it in the refrigerator, it's better in a container because um, then it won't be used over and when you want to serve it, it will be used over. So basically right now, start to mix it, you'll see that, or feel that at the bottom is starting to get thick. So you want to just stir it every so often to prevent it from not being as beautiful. But when it's cooled in the refrigerator, you'll notice that it ends up being more on the thicker side. But again, like I said, once you shake it, it'll be fine. But that's pretty much how you do it. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it, um, so um, I'll just get to the next step so you guys can see how it's done. Um, sorry about all these in between. I'm not sure if you guys like it with the um, connotation or if you just want just the steps um, with everything already prepared. But let me know in the comments below. Um, like I said, I'm open to ideas and suggestions. Um, but yeah, so hopefully um, you guys will enjoy this and that. Uh, from this because I'm so thankful for you guys um, and those of you that took the time out your day to, or night to watch this and subscribe. Um, I'm hoping that you'll like this tip. So if you do actually um, make it and um, you want me to know, you can um, take a picture or a short clip and put it on Instagram and you can tag me. My Username is magnetic underscore Melissa. So um, then, you know, I'll know some of the things that you guys like and let me know if you made any variations to it. Um, so um, I'm gonna pause it. When I get to the next step, pour it into the um, container. I'll show you guys that and show you the last thing that you're gonna add that I didn't forget about, even though my recall is kind of messed up lately because of some personal issues, but it is what it is, you know, so um, hopefully you guys enjoy this and you like it, and if you left anything out, I'll add it in the comment section below, but hopefully I believe that should be it, so I'm going to pause it, show you um, the last step when you put it to the container, and what you add, and go from there, and how much of it. Basically, what I did was I added on medium, if you want it to be a slow boil or not slow boil, let it 
slowly. You don't have to have that low if you want to do something else. But basically that was about 10 minutes and then I turned it to low because um, I didn't want it to come to the foil. But I noticed that um, I was away from it and not stirring it as much. It did start to almost boil. Um, but I don't know if you can see. But this is how the coloring is now. It's like a golden um, like spice. So you're gonna pour it now back into the stainless steel container before you put it into whatever you want to drink out of. And so my um, phone died up and as usual, so I'll try to make cash.
guys enjoyed this video.